Hello everybody and welcome to another Arkham Horror Archetype Guide. We are continuing through the Innsmouth Conspiracy Curse and Blessed uh, Archetypes. And today, as you can see on the screen, we are doing the Rogue Curse Archetype. Bryn, as our resident rogue expert, our rogue spurt, if you will, uh, what is the goal of this archetype? Well, we're trying to put a whole bunch of curse tokens into the chaos bag. And then, ideally kind of just ignore them mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, like we get to we all of all of the green effects that let you put curse tokens into the bag generally give you something powerful in exchange so you, the goal is to take that powerful thing and then try to ignore the consequence of what you've just done mm -hmm. sick all right let's just dive in and start talking about notable cards um starting uh but you know what i'll, I'll once again <laughs> pass these ones to you you can just kind of keep right. this this train going you know most of these cards all right, so we got Lucky Penny, which is a level two, two-costed exceptional asset that takes up the accessory slot. It has a force stability that says when you reveal a blessed or a cursed token from the bag, flip a coin. Ooh. On a heads, you treat the token as though it were a blessed token. On tails, you treat it as though it were a cursed token. Uh, if we've put a whole lot of cursed tokens into the bag and not very many blessed tokens, like our cards are mostly want to do, I'll take 50-50 on them being good instead. Yeah, yeah. That seems that seems like a great deal. Yeah. And uh, bonus points, if you when you flip the coin for this card, it's actually a cursed penny. That would be yeah. pretty sweet as well if you could do that in real life. Yeah. I'd also, I think if you turn a blessed token into a cursed token and then fail, you get to draw a card. Uh, not you even if you fail, fail, just even if you flip it. Oh, man, mm -hmm. it doesn't even have to make you fail. Yeah. That's yeah. all upside. Yeah, especially when you get the Covenant going, right? But yeah. would that work? You treat it, so you would reveal it. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, then we got Eye of the Gene, which is a two-costed level two exceptional asset that takes up a hand slot. Mm -hmm. As a reaction effect, when you initiate a skill test during your turn, you can exhaust Eye of the Gene. Set your base skill value to five for this test. If <laughs> if a blessed token is revealed during this test, ready eye of the gene. If a cursed token is revealed during this test, you may take an additional action during this turn. Mm -hmm. Also, this one is just it's just another way to help you ignore the cursed tokens that you may have put into the back. Mm -hmm. uh, also, getting to set your skills to five as rogue, the only skill that you probably have at five is foot. Uh, every other number is probably lower than that. So this is probably like a plus one and maybe a third. Something like that. Mm -hmm. It is a shame that you can only use it during your turn, but that makes sense because the major weakness of this color is the low brain scores that they all get. Yeah. <laughs> so if you could use it during the mythos phase, uh, kind of uh, kind of turn that weakness into a joke. Yeah, yeah. Uh, then we got the false covenant which is our primary way to ignore curse tokens uh, it is a two costed permanent asset limit one covenant per deck as a reaction effect when an investigator at your location reveals a curse token during a skill test exhaust false covenant cancel that token return it to the token pool and reveal another token mm -hmm. so this one literally just lets us ignore a curse token yeah it's like we didn't even put it in the bag but not just for us, for anybody at our location, which is a little bit better. Yeah, they'll, they'll really appreciate it. You're like, yeah. you load the curse yeah. bag up and you're like, don't worry, I'm gonna use this once, probably on me a turn, but it might be good for you. Yeah, it might be, I might use it to help you, probably not, but maybe. Uh, last up here, we've got Geese, otherwise known as the Goose. It is a two costed, Level two, exceptional asset that gives you plus one brain, plus one book, plus one punch, and plus one foot. With a forced ability, after Goose enters play, you must you have to make a promise using the following uh, the following framework. Uh, I will not play, commit, or draw cards during each of my turns. If you break that promise, then the Goose gets mad and discards itself and puts ten curse tokens into the bag. Mm -hmm. Worth noting, it can only put the difference between what's currently in the bag and 10 yeah. into the bag, so sometimes maybe it's not such a bad thing. However, the promise is pretty easy to abide by. 
Mm -hmm. uh, like once you've got once you've got all your gear in play, you don't really need to play cards anymore. Yeah. Uh, the commit, the commit only means that you can't commit cards during your own turn, not during other investigators' turn or the turns or the mythos phase. Uh, and I will not draw cards. That one's a little bit tougher to control. Mm -hmm. But uh, also probably the uh, like least impactful to you. Like once you've once you've got all of your stuff ready to go, mm -hmm. you don't need to go looking for more cards. Yeah, and then the like the game will just give them to you. Yeah, and then, and also like there are some things that can trigger outside of your turn two to draw that could still you can make the goose like <laughs> trick the goose, yeah. and then you can uh, cheat cheat the goose. And then as always, you can just if you really want curse tokens, you can just make the goose angry, and really you're benefiting from it. Yeah, yeah, maybe one of your friends is trying to translate a whatever the hell that stupid book is called. Yeah. <laughs> this yeah. puts the number they need into the back instantly. Just just like that. Yeah. All right, we got lucky dice or are they? This is a two cost, three experience exceptional asset that takes up the uh, relic slot or the accessory slot. Uh, as a reaction, when you reveal a non-curse, non-chaos, to a uh, non-autofail uh, chaos token, add one curse token to the chaos bag. Ignore the just revealed token and reveal another one to resolve. If that token has a curse or autofail symbol, return lucky dice to your hand. Cannot be ignored or canceled. So this, the original lucky dice burn you have to pay to use, right? Yeah, the original lucky dice cost you two money to use, and if the token that's revealed is the auto fail you remove them from the game mm -hmm. so yeah this is uh just if you want to get more free like free re-rolls uh, and you like lucky dice and what they do and also uh this one just gets returned to your hand which is a lot nicer than like you know the dice literally disappearing through time and space uh, we got Priest of Two Faiths. This is a one cost, one experience ally asset that soaks two damage and two horror. As a reaction, after he enters, enters play, add three blessed tokens to the Chaos Bag. At the end of the upkeep phase, you must either add one cursed token to the Chaos Bag or discard Priest of Two Faiths. So this kind of sounds like when you're first reading it, you might think it's a bad thing, but it actually is a great, consistent way to add um, cursed tokens to the Chaos Bag if you're looking to take advantage of those. Uh, if you want to be like... Uh, so if you want to just find ways to consistently have these things procking, for example, when we're looking at Riastrad later, or uh, if you want your Eye of Dijin to ready and for you to get more actions, this is a way for you to consistently do it. And then one die, and then he's eventually just going to die. He's going to soak two damage and two horror for you, and then like his job is done, and he's super inexpensive. Like this guy's like he's going to do a lot of work for you in this archetype. Speaking of someone yeah. who, oh sorry. Normal, normally you can't uh, you can't choose to put the accursed follower in your deck but now you can yes now you can and everyone will be like thanks <laughs> um speaking of someone who you think is going to do a bunch of work for you we got tristan botley so he's a five cost two experience ally that soaks for three damage and two horror um and after your turn begins as a reaction you can choose two skills until the start of your next turn you get plus one to each of those skills as a reaction, after any skill test ends in which a total of three or more Bless or Curse tokens were revealed, play Tristan Botley from your hand at no cost. So that is slim chance of happening. And you just got to accept that it's not your guaranteed way to put Tristan into play. However, Tristan is also still just like pretty good at five like plus two plus one to two of your skills that you can choose and change depending on what you need can actually like do a bunch of work i don't think like he's an ally that like you know he's not you're not like yes i finally got tristan botley in my deck like now i'm gonna finally pop off and do everything i wanted but his he does provide you with some some nice boost to what you need and if you ever get him in for free like it's gonna feel oh so nice like oh my gosh you're gonna be like yeah. tristan you've done it yeah um, it yeah. It is also worth noting that there are a great many green effects that we're not going to go go into detail about here, but that allow you to add one stat to another for a skill test. Mm -hmm. Tristan's real strong with those. Yeah, because yeah. you get to you get to just pick those two stats and be like plus two to my test instead of plus one. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, up next, we got Reastrad. This is a zero cost, one experience, spell spirit, cursed event. Fight. When you initiate this attack, add up to three cursed tokens to the chaos bag. For each cursed token added to the chaos bag in this way, you get plus one fist and deal plus one damage for this attack. Um, yeah, so you're going to be adding three cursed tokens, which is, uh, you know, something you would like to do. Uh, in this archetype, and then you get to just punch uh, and deal a bunch of damage. So you can get plus three fist and then deal plus, and deal four damage for the attack. That's pretty juicy. Especially in certain green characters who may or may not be coming up later in Travis's deck guide. <laughs> so the Riastrad mm -hmm. is a reference to the Kukulin myth. Irish folklore. Oh yeah, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, where he would, uh, he was a demigod who in battle would go into a, they call it a Riastrad. It's translated as a, translated as like warp spasm. Mm -hmm. uh, but he would turn into a horrible monster and basically kill everybody around him. Yeah, I, I, I know him. I played him in Smite once and he turned into a big scary monster and I was like, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> but it's cool. Um, Bryn, I'll throw these ones to... You know what, actually, Travis, these are all pretty straightforward. I can give these ones to you. <laughs> um, so Skeptic is a one experience skill. It's practiced. Commits for a while, and uh, during the skill test, each of the Bless and Curse tokens you reveal are just plus one instead of a normal modifier of plus two or negative two. Um, this is a really nice uh, skill to have where you don't just like throw it at tests. You want to keep it kind of in your pocket for important tests. You don't just get blindsided by drawing two or three curses in a row, or especially for uh, things that care about you succeeding by X. Mm -hmm. It's really nice for those ones. Continues the theme of ignoring um, curse tokens, um, which uh, a small side here. The blessed tokens are like their own reward for putting them in the bag, so lots of the cards that care about them use them as a resource. Mm -hmm. Whereas uh, putting the cursed tokens in the bag for yellow and green cards like is the cost. So a lot of their sort of payoffs are really just ways to mitigate them instead. Mm -hmm. uh, we have this justify the means here is next. It's also practice and curse skill. Cost three experience put in your deck. Does not commit for any symbols, but you may commit to any type of test. As additional cost to commit to a skill test, you add curse tokens to the bag equal to the test difficulty, and the test automatically succeeds. Um, this is like a this is a very powerful card. Just automatically succeeding a test is is pretty good. Uh, it doesn't matter how many curse tokens you put in the bag if you just like heal the boss monster or whatever. Yeah. Or your uh, your seeker is currently doing a really big arcane gliss. Guiding Stones test and gets like you know five or six clues off of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. it is. It is worth noting that because it is a cost to commit it, that you must add tokens to the bag equal to the test. If there is not, you can only have ten of them in the bag. If there is not space to add that many tokens, you cannot commit this to that test. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, next up, we got Favor of the Moon. This is a one experience uh, asset, one to play. If it's fast, when you play, you seal up to three curse tokens. If there are no tokens on it, you discard it. As a reaction, when you reveal a curse token, you may choose to reveal one of the curse tokens on Favor of the Moon, and if you do, you gain a resource. Um, this one is slightly less important for the curse archetypes uh, in green and yellow than it is for the, the Blessing one, the two colors, but it still has its uses where you can... Uh, you know, guarantee plus one to a test with skeptic, or you can guarantee get your. Um, that's a yellow card. Guarantee like. If you're really playing a long shot, you can guarantee a coin flip on your lucky penny and try to get plus two. <laughs> Not a good test. Um, you can get yourself a guaranteed extra action of your hydrogen. Or it can just like act as a battery to hold on to the curse tokens. Yeah. So you don't have to draw them. Yeah. Yeah, this one this one mostly just does a, does a reasonable job of softening the bag up for your teammates. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's an economy card, which is kinda weird, but Yeah. That is a, it is a little weird. 
Probably the, one of the cards that functions best with is Manipulate Destiny here. Cost one to play, two experience, put your deck as an event, commits for a while. Uh, you reveal tokens from the bag until you reveal a auto fail, Elder Sign, Blesser Curse. And if you reveal a curse or auto fail, you deal two damage in enemy evocation. And if you reveal a Blessing or Elder Sign, you heal two damage from the Vesker ally asset at your location. And the action is not commit attacks or provoke attacks for opportunity. Fear of the Moon just like guarantees this is one money deal to damage. And it's actually like zero money to you to damage because you get your um, resource back. Resource back yeah. with favor of the moon, which is pretty sweet. Yeah. Sweet. And uh, I think we said this in the last video, but like the two damage is the nice part of this card. Like, mm -hmm. that's what you want to get. Bryn, why don't you take Tempt Fate because Travis and I are talking for the rest of the video. <laughs> Oh, no. oh, yeah, okay. Uh, Temp Fate is just zero cost and fast. Any Lightning Bolt window, add three Curse Tokens to the bag, then add three Bless Tokens to the bag, and then draw a card. It's just a, just a free way to make sure that these tokens exist in the bag. Yeah, the things you want them to exist for. Yeah. You know, like maybe you're trying to set up a Tristan, like a free Tristan Botley turn. This makes it much more likely. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then you can also, maybe like... Maybe you're here to flip coins. Yeah, yeah. And then you can also make your teammates happy because you're like, I'm adding curse tokens, but don't worry. There's also three blessed tokens. But don't be scared of curse tokens. We, yeah, we've played with them for a bit now. We haven't gone all in on them, but we play Promise of Power and Faustian Bargain, um, which also is like a notable card for this archetype. Uh, I realize now after going through these that it wasn't on the list, but I mean, it just makes five resources and put two curse tokens in. So it's not really like for the archetype, it's just like a staple, powerful card. But they're less scary than you think. Don't worry about them. All right. What does this synergize with? Uh, so the Seeker Curse Archetype pairing up with another Curse Token focused archetype allows you for more access to adding and benefiting from Curse Tokens. As Travis said, it's not really like Blessed Tokens where like um, the, the benefit of Curse Tokens a lot of the time is just, you know, ignoring them or like mitigating them or benefiting from them after you draw them. Um, but... You know, the more you can touch into different archetypes, like uh, the Seeker Curse or the Paradox and Mystic, the more you're going to get out of your tokens, and that's good. Because just, you know, getting more out of what you put into the game will help you win better. Bless archetypes as well. Having both Bless and Curse tokens in the cup will allow them to sometimes balance out, or maybe let you play your Tristan for free. But still, don't count on it. I think someone in one of our comments, while Travis is doing the deck, I want to see, because they did the math, for how likely it is for, the, uh, for Tristan. So I'm gonna look that up while Travis talks about our deck, which is Tony Morgan. Go for it, Travis. Yes, yeah, this is a Tony Morgan deck playing yellow cards, three or five experience. Um, as you would expect, it is primarily a monster fighting deck, but we do have some clue getting for our yellow cards in here. Um, so for our, our just fighting stuff, we got we got the Mauser C96 and the level 2 Switchblade, along with Tony's Colts he comes with, of course. Um, just pretty solid weapons to have in your deck. Playing Lonnie Riddler and, Ritter and Leather Jacket. That little combo to keep Tony from going insane, as well as that plus one punch boost, while un not necessary, is nice to have. Um, we've got our... Uh, Our Eye of the Djinn here and our Lucky Penny as our sort of curse payoffs for all the curse tokens we're dumping into the bag. Um, Priest of Toothface is going to put some blessed tokens in to help mitigate our uh, big slew of curse tokens we're putting in, as well as like give us some curse tokens potentially. But most of the time, you're just going to be playing for the blessed tokens, then push them in front of the nearest bus. <laughs> um, we are playing a copy of Charisma to, uh, so they aren't dead cards if you have Lonnie in play. Because ideally, once you have a Lonnie in play, you're never going to get rid of her. Mm -hmm. um, our other permanent is the False Covenant, uh, which of course exists to, once again, help make all the curse tokens we're putting in. Um, we have Restrad as a combat spell. 
um, allows you to just chunk down a big enemy without like having a weapon or spending ammo off on your weapons. Um, you can also commit for two fun show icons, which is pretty solid for the Mauser and the Switchblade. If you really don't want to put curse tokens in it, or you can't. Um, and then justify the means is our other green uh, way to put curse tokens into the bag where we can just pass one of our tests. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a couple of skeptics here, again, to ignore those curse tokens on big important plays. Uh, and then our last green card in the list, I believe, is you handle this one just as a way to mitigate the encounter deck with Tony's garbage defensive stats. Yeah, before you go to the um, seeker cards, yeah, like no. I think with Tony Morgan and Justify the Means, if like you're at a risk of dying, and like even if you're like you you draw like a, a rotting remains, and you just want to like use your Justify the Means on that, like it's really not like a bad decision like depending on how like otherwise you're set up but if you just like don't want to it's it's basically like more protection even for you in the mythos phase with that so like don't feel bad about using that to like you don't need to like have the too good to use syndrome where you're like i'm gonna use this justify the means on fighting this big boss but i mean like tony's already like good at fighting a big boss so Staying alive, if you don't have like Lonnie Ritter and Leather Jacket going, to just like dodge three curse tokens to just pass a, um, a Rotting Remains is not bad, like in, in, for a five horror, two willpower investigator, right? Um, for our yellow card, Sail Splash, we got a couple copies of Forewarned here again to mitigate those, bad, those poor defensive stats. Mm -hmm. um, and between like I have the Jin and some of the other yellow cards that we have. It shouldn't be too difficult to pick up a clue or have one hanging around to use this. We've got deep knowledge for our uh, draw economy here. Um, which is like you could just give it to other people if you want. Um, we got our stirring up trouble as a way to get clues. Bay, uh, again, is just another defensive option to keep those uh well particularly your brain stat from killing yeah <laughs> and we've got plan of action here just as a um solid skill to have when i built this deck i had thought that plan of action could be used in the mythos phase for plus two to your brain or your foot but now knowing that you can't i would consider cutting this yeah or um, potentially Faustian Bargain. Yeah. This deck has like a fair amount of assets, but none of them are really like that expensive. Same with the uh, events. Like most of them, mm -hmm. I think actually all of your events cost zero. <laughs> <laughs> um, you don't really need the economy, but uh, and this plan of action like is just a solid way to uh, you know draw cycle an extra card yeah. or to help pick up the clue for forewarned yeah. if you really need it. It, so, it, it does seem strange though that it doesn't work in the mythos phase it seems yeah yeah it's like oh when am i doing a brain test for my first action on a turn if i'm not a mystic it seems <laughs> um that yeah the decks i mean it's it's a tony deck but it's a cursed tony deck and i think it'd be pretty fun um i just like the idea of tony hulking out with rhea Strahd. i think that's pretty exciting of a visual image in my head um, for reference, I found the comment. This is from Anaphysic. Uh, there, it's, they say this is rough math, but from I, I trust their math. They seem to be on point with everything else they've commented so far. But that if you have no token bag, no token manipulation, no covenants, no favors, uh, and assuming it's just like a standard Mythos Cup, with ten total bless and curses in the bag, there's about a five percent chance of triggering Tristan. Uh, with 15 in the bag, there's a 10% chance, and with all 20, there's a 15% chance. So you'd probably be thinking, oh, Justin, 15 doesn't sound so crazy. Well, 15%, you need 20 of the tokens in the bag, and that is like, I have never seen 10 and 10, so it's it's low. So expect to just play him, and as Bryn was saying, using him to take advantage of the skills that use two of your stats together. That's kind of like what um, Tristan is best for. Yeah. Yeah, he's also kind of neat with the Eye of the G, where you yeah. can uh, 
you can pick whatever skill you want, whatever you need to be doing this turn. And then you're just like, I'm testing it at six. Mm -hmm. Sick. Well, that is our um, rogue curse archetype. We'll see you in a few days where we're going to be talking about the paradox archetype, the mystic one. Uh, so we'll see you then. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a good one. And as always, GG's.